This will be the day Star Trek dies. This will be the day Star Trek dies. My, my, Miss American Pie. So here I am minding my own business on a Sunday afternoon when Heels vs. Babyface decided to drop a video on us and I think this video will... Uh, I don't I don't know what I can't... Uh, Hollywood is gonna do what Hollywood's always gonna do and they're gonna ruin everything. Like just ruin everything. Now I have a slightly different opinion than uh, my good man as over at Heels vs. Babyface and I will link to his video right here. After this video, please be sure to check it out. His profanity filled rant will leave you feeling something. I know that. I'm just feeling a little dead, so you won't get the same type of reaction out of me. So for those of you who aren't in the know, Alex Kurtzman is the, uh, I guess like showrunner overall. Consider him the Kevin Feige, if you will who runs all of the MCU for Star Trek for CBS. Uh, the man was has been with CBS for a very long time. He came from Hawaii Five-0, which has been on for 10 years, but I don't know anybody other than Noob Noob who likes it and maybe some old people. So the guy uh, doesn't, I don't think he has a real good track record of success. Uh, I know he's done some other garbage things that we won't get into here because I've gone over it in other videos. But as, We've all, we've talked about the Picard series is god awful. Star Trek Discovery is god awful. I hear, I, Lower Decks, which is the animated version of Star Trek, didn't even bother watching. So, so just to be straight with everybody, like I, I am a Star Trek fan, but an old school Star Trek fan. I'm, uh, I like, I'm a big fan of The Next Generation. That's probably my favorite series. I like Deep Space Nine. I like the original series. I like the original movies. What Kurtzman has done is an abomination with Star Trek to the point where I won't even participate. I won't watch it. I won't review them. I won't even give them any attention. I know that then when they ran reruns during the pandemic that they were pulling zero numbers. They could get, barely get anybody to watch them. Uh, they were at the bottom of the list. I know we did a video uh, on their ratings, which maybe I'll find that one right here. So Star Trek Discovery is just a, an abomination along with the rest of whatever Kurtzman has touched. But CBS has decided to ink a mega deal with Alex Kurtzman, the top producer and architect of the Star Trek universe. A nine figure overall deal for a $150 million range. Okay, it puts him in the, in the top of producers. Congratulations, him and his secret hideout group. That means, and here's the depressing part, is that he's going to be around until 2026. So, <laughs> you are not going to get any good Star Trek anytime in the near future. You're gonna stick with Netflix, rewatching TNG as I just did, or maybe I'll go back and rewatch uh, Deep Space Nine. Don't know, but I know what I won't be watching is this. I will not be watching this. Uh, I think he originally signed a four year deal and then two years later, now he's re-upped for a five-year deal. I, d I don't understand. I mean, I do understand. And I'm going to show you why this financially makes sense on some level. And uh, it's just, de it's more depressing than anything, anything. I don't care if the guy makes money. That is perfectly fine. He can do whatever he wants. But this is just, it's, it's, it's sad. So... It seems like, you know, we heard about the uh, two doofuses who did Game of Thrones, uh, Benehoff and Weiss, I think their names are. Those guys signed a giant deal. It just seems like the big streaming services and the big corporations are trying to sign as anybody that they think has talent at all, period. I don't agree with this one, but they don't have, th there's not enough people, you know, Hollywood's so diverse that they don't have enough people to go around to possibly helm a new Star Trek. They don't have anybody except for this doofus. So, um, and, and this is how I'm going to explain it. And it's going to make me sad to explain it this way. 
Uh, we'll come back to this because we're going to talk about a little bit more of what else he's going to do for Star Trek that you shouldn't watch, but we'll talk about it anyway. As a certified Christopher Nolan stan, um, as far you know, I, I will say like I saw Tenant and I wasn't blown away. We did a review for Tenant. You can catch that. Noob Noob did one and he tries to explain entropy and, and physics and he doesn't even know. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But anyway, Netflix wants to sign Christopher Nolan. So think about this. Christopher Nolan, who I adore, think he's, you know, the next best thing next to sliced bread. It, they're trying to sign him and um, they're willing to, I think they said they're willing to pay almost anything to get him. And this is coming from Netflix. So let me see if I had the exact quote here, but I, I understand like he literally just released a movie that was basically critically panned and he wasn't happy about it. He, well not, he, he liked the movie, but, but the critics weren't happy about it. It didn't do that well in the, in the box office. It didn't save, save the box office from the coup or anything like that. Uh, he went on and ripped HBO Max, described it as the worst streaming service. Like the man is a little volatile, you know, he could, you know, here it says here, tenant underperformed in the box office, uh, performing 45 million before the, the, you know, the, the whole thing like really hit, but they're willing to pay virtually anything to get Christopher Nolan, which means they'll sign Kurtzman for a long-term deal because that's basically in their eyes, getting him on the cheap. So this clown will continue to flush Star Trek down the toilet with such episodes, with such shows as, you know, he's going to continue Star Trek Discovery. Bleh. Picard. Bleh. Lower Decks. Don't know enough about it. Upcoming Star Trek Prodigy in partnership with Nickelodeon. Who's going to watch that? Who? Anybody. And now they're doing... <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have strange new worlds with Pike and Spock and number one and then they're probably gonna do a section 31 they couldn't it's so bad that Lower Decks could not get an international deal for for distribution because nobody wanted it they can't get it from any like nobody wants to purchase this thing they're they're claiming that they're gonna they're gonna include digital content across podcasts because I'm sure you want to hear a, a podcast about about Star Trek Discovery, <laughs> websites and social content, including games, collectibles, published. I have never once. First of all, there's no Star Trek conventions that would ever even entertain Discovery, and there's nobody looking at the toys like that. None of it. No, there's nothing. There is nothing. They have drained Star Trek of everything. There is not an ounce left of life in it. It's all just an empty shell. But they're also going to develop the New York Times. Its special bargain rates is based on a Stephen King short story. We've all seen how these Stephen King things go. They don't usually go well. Maybe once in a blue moon, some one of them hits. Most of the time, they go off and nobody cares about them. So this is what we have to look forward to. If you're a Star Trek fan, good luck. At least it's still available on streaming and you can get all the old stuff for now. I, I it's These are sad times, people. But stay strong. Stay positive. We'll get through this. You got the old stuff. You know what I mean? I know you're looking for new stuff, but pff, who needs new stuff when you got old stuff? I promise you, things will get better. Keep uh, keep your chin up there. I'm going to try to keep mine up. And uh, from all of us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You, we love y'all. Make sure you catch our Friday night, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, p.m. streaming, uh, live stream of our full-length audio podcast that you can get on all pod uh, podcast platforms. And uh, I guess we're going on to the next one.